Okay. Um, welcome. Uh, happy to have you here. Um, always nice to talk to the diehard people that stay. Um, I'm Marcel van Brakel. I'm um, uh, founder and lead designer at Polymorph. Uh, we're an experienced design studio based in Holland. And I always wanted to start with this slide. Uh, my colleague made um, of his daughter during sleep because it kind of sums up what we're doing, I think. Um, basically, basically, she's dreaming. I don't know if you can see it well, but you see the rapid eye movement of her, her eye uh, while she is asleep. And uh, in a way, it kind of sums up what we try to do with the studio. We want to act as a, as a lab um, dreaming, actually, uh, making new stuff, uh, thinking about future developments and uh, take that into the now uh, and don't wait for the future, but prototype it now. And uh, what I also like about the image is that um, it is the body asleep, but it is also kind of telling us that it is, it is a machine, it's dreaming. So during the dream, the body is still thinking it has to see or the rapid eye movements, it's searching for reality maybe. Uh, it also tells us that maybe we don't need the reality uh, directly to create an experience or a story since we, when we're dreaming, the story is auto-created by the brain and it has nothing to do with reality. Um, so what do we do with a polymorph? We, can't, we try to create uh, speculative uh, or critical uh, embodied experiences in a cross-section between science, art, technology and design. Uh, we do not do that in certain ways. We never work media specific, so it's always something else. Polymorph means being in this in-between uh, state of transition. So that also means for if each project we have a different team, we have different um, funding or um, and also different goals and also different media. Um, but one of the key things that's in all of our projects is always about the body in a sense and the relationship of the body with technology. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I think Polymorph started off as a theater group. So I'm a filmmaker when I graduated, then we moved into theater um, and we created kind of location-based things where the audience was not like stationary like you are now on a, on, a, on a chair looking at me, but we tried to kind of create fully immersive experiences for the, also for the audience. So that often meant that audience would be in the set able to interact with actors or with the space. Um, and we always incorporate some, some kind of technology. Uh, it could be like uh, um, uh, video, uh, video tracking, working with drones, uh, working with interaction. Uh, but in time, we uh, moved away from that uh, into working with technology in different kinds. I will explain later a bit more about the projects. Um, and I, like I tell, already told, we design, we try to design bodily narratives uh, for, and also think about the relationship that the body has with all kinds of different things. And if you think about the body itself, um, it has these different dimensions to kind of have a reach into the world. So, um, of course, the body itself has all of these different sensory apparatus, and without them, reality would not exist for the body. So. One of the key interests of, of the studio is like how the physical body builds reality models out of these sensory uh, um, systems and create narrative out of, out of them. Um, in our vision, the body is kind of this predictive machine out of the sensory body. It kind of tries to predict and it does that by creating narratives, actually. Um, and then, of course, if you think about the human body, uh, we're kind of hopeless. Um, we're kind of in the middle. If you look at biology, uh, we're not very fast, not very tall, not very, yeah, maybe we're smart. That's maybe something that makes us exceptional. But if you look at the body, we're kind of mediocre, but with what, uh, what, what kind of our intelligence gave us as a gift was the, the, of course, the gift of technology, um, and the way that, that we, we use the technology in a sense to enhance our powers, enhance our reach into nature and the loss of nature. Um, and that can be also in simple ways. I mean, you're wearing clothes, that's the simple technology for you to regulate your temperature um, and to be safe or protect the body. So I think 
there's this evolution of building ever more technologies able to create more and more power for the human body in a sense. But I think even more powerful and ha also having more impact is the cultural systems that we create in our brain. So is this story, is this, this storytelling machine is constantly creating new narratives and new understanding uh, and also tries to spread that by the act of storytelling. And in, uh, in a sense, that's even more powerful than the technologies that we have. The stories are way more powerful to kind of create social groups, create bondage, create new visual uh, ideas to kind of understand reality. So that's another interest of ours. And the final uh, category that's often over overlooked is that the body is, of course, completely interconnected with its surroundings, with the ecologies and also the other life forms living on this planet. Um, so with Pony Morph, we want to tap into all of these different things, and we do that with long-term research projects. But to step back to the beginning, I'm um, going to have a really short deep into the kind of stuff we did in the theater. I'm not going to play the clip because it takes too long, but we started off doing opera. Um, and this was a project called Singmond, uh, actually uh, inspired by the work of a German, German writer, Marcel Bayer. Uh, he called, uh, he wrote a, a amazing book, Flughunde, about, uh, an interesting find in the Molkor of Hitler, Germany, right after it was liberated, they found the archive, the sound archive actually, and it was kind of a mysterious thing. Uh, they didn't know who put it there. And Marcel Abaya wrote a book about it, about a fictional uh, uh, character who kind of had this pseudo scientific idea that uh, the human soul is kind of situated in the human voice. And that was, I, we thought that was a very interesting, it's an amazing book um, um, idea for a theater play. So that created Singmund, and this is kind of the, the floor plan of the whole installation, it's really big. 21 by 25 meters and we would put in all of the actors and all of the audience in this space and basically do like have like a lot of speakers around it and also a lot of speakers inside of the installation and the audience would be completely free to do whatever they want uh at the same time there would be a collective uh experience of hearing what is happening in the bunker from all of these different characters and that would combine into an opera which was uh, created with human voice or electronically processed voice. Um, and this is a clip with, where we also, we filmed uh, what is happening with, with the human voice while you're singing. So it's nice to look at. This is your vocal cords. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> but we, we we kind of made a recording of course in the in the hospital because you cannot do that live and then we did a click track with uh, with the singer who was lip, lip syncing really to the to the score. So we projected that next to the live action so you could really have this inside getting into the body. Um, yeah, I'm not going to tell more about the theater background, ask me later. Um, but um, uh, after my theater stuff, I started into immersive, immersive art and we started with uh, getting interested in uh, the sense of smell of humans. Uh, we wrote a book about it, researching it. We were complete amateurs in it, but it was so fascinating and so inspiring that we made a whole, full body of work with it, with a lot of different artworks. Um, what I think most fascinating is about smell is that like it is interconnected to our limbic system, our emotional uh, parts in the brain. And uh, they have like this uh, unconscious entry to the brain. So. Not even as uh, the, the body kind of marks memories uh, uh, in the brain um, and it marks the smell, but the smell is also an, a highway to these memories and that's, that makes it very powerful. But we all kind of also realize it's a da data system, uh, which is even more 
interesting, I think. Uh, at this moment, uh, you might smile at each other and the actual molecules are in your body. Um, so that makes creates an immediately intimate uh, uh, connection. But we're also able to gather a lot of information on a subconscious level about smell um, and, and act on it. Um, to give one example, we can smell fear of each other, but we can also, for instance, uh, women which are highly sensitive to smell, they can smell if another woman is just ovulating and she becomes more passive aggressive to that person. Um, so it, so it in, informs our behavior, um, very fundamental. Uh, and in the book, we had like different topics to, we, we try to um, uh, focus on to understand smell. And when you think about the body and smell, it's also kind of interesting because we mostly think about our body as this confined space of the flesh. But if you include the, the odor of the body, it's able to kind of reach to places where you have been or um, kind of go to places where the body is want to come. So in a sense, the body is also this um, etherical being that which, which can reach in all kinds of places, uh, have a presence there without you knowing it, and in, in a sense kind of can, can, is able to time travel. Um, so for if we want to work with smell, you first need to control it. So for that, we created our own technology. And with that technology, we created our own for kind of hit project, which is called Famous Deaths. I'm showing you a very fast trailer. Others. Bang. So, uh, Famous Death is an art installation in which we, you, as an audience, you get shoved in a more freezing cell. Uh, and um, within the cell, you cannot get out. We don't have a panic button if you really want to get out. But um, um, we create the final five minutes of a famous person's life till you die. So it's actually, and we do that from a first person perspective. Um, so it's actually kind of this analog VR system. I like to frame it like that to kind of stretch out the boundaries. Um, and we, the only medium that we work with is smell and, and sound, of course. Um, and we, with famous deaths, you can choose to be uh, Lady Diana or Whitney Houston or Gaddafi or Van Gogh and have this uh, powerful experience. And we treated it really as a documentary piece. So we started off with a lot of research on what, what was this fi final minutes of a famous person's life look like. And, and for, it, for instance, in this case, we found police photos from uh, Lady, uh, from Whitney Houston's her, uh, hotel just before she was working on a comeback. She stayed in this hotel. Uh, she used crack cocaine um, and stepped in the bathtub and got a brush, blood rush and she fainted, drowned in her own bath. But for us, it was interesting to kind of uh, be a detective on all of this kind of material. Kind of, we could look, yeah, okay, she smokes mental cigarettes and had a coke and um, this is actually the bathtub she drowned in. And you can see this gravy jar and that gravy jar contained olive oil. So we knew that smell was there. So as in a documentary, we've, we created the audio design and then worked with smell. I uh, had like, I think 12 smells for each story. Um, and the amazing thing that um, during the experience, when we talked to a lot of the audience, a lot of strange uh, things happened to the audience. Things that we didn't expect. Uh, this is uh, the Qaddafi scenario. Qaddafi, of course, when it, he, he flies from Sirte, uh, right before his death, he, he gets bombed by a French jet fighter and he has to flee and, and hide in the sewer system. Um, but uh, in that moment, we use uh, the smell of burned rubber um, to, to, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in this uh, more creasing cell. And a lot of people were saying, okay, you're heating up the installation. Uh, they, would think, they would think we would also manipulate uh, temperature, which was not the case. But it gave us a very interesting hint about this chemical body that we are, that 
it, this, this, this smell was automatically tri tr uh, firing off flight to fight mode or hormonal response to the danger that was in the, in, in the story. And that made people hot. And in that can sense, they thought we were controlling the environment was the other way around. So uh, getting interested in this um, relationship, direct manipulation, where not only the media is outside of the body, we try to figure out, okay, can we really make an interesting project? And this actually our second long-term research project is still ongoing, synaptic theater, in which you kind of research, can we use the brain itself directly as a medium? as a space, as a media drive to manipulate or influence. And we started that research with trying to include that. Uh, the first idea was to ha have a, like a hormonal transplant. So maybe I have my dog or some, something, not, not human, somewhere, maybe I give him uh, food. And at the same time that it's enjoying its meal, it's happy and excited, I get a shot of hormones having the same effect. And the next idea was like, okay, let's do that in a sequential way. Can we do it, a user a journey, a story journey, with just only manipulating the, the hormones? Uh, we talked to a lot of um, scientists, and uh, the thing is, the, the the science not there yet. So they know what a, a hormone does, but they don't know how a sequence work of hormones. So it was way too dangerous. We have we have to leave that as a as a research field. Um, but then we thought, if we cannot input the brain, let's output the brain. And that was the spark for the entangled body, which turned into a real um, installation. This is the image of a medium, and he has an ectoplasma. This is this kind of in-between material world, uh, and the material world and the spiritual world medium of a medium to kind of interconnect the body with the spiritual world. Uh, it's at the same time, of course, fake photography, but it's, it's interesting to think about how the technologies that we invent also tell stories about how we perceive the body and yourself. Um, so the basic concept for Entangled Body, this is my song, um, is we use a BCR headset, um, brain computer interface to read out emotional state of the user. And uh, out of that data, we can make a prediction on the, um, on the emotional state of the user. Um, and inside a certain pot, um, audience will sit down and you see these pyramid shapes in between the, in midair, in between these, uh, these pyramid shape, we'll project a computer representation of the emotional state. So we did research on how can we, for instance, um, if you create a sculpture, a digital sculpture of being relaxed or being agitated, and how would that look like? And how can we project that in midair? Um, for this, we used ultrasound. So really, really low uh, frequencies. And the interesting thing is with that, we could build uh, a, a, a sculpture in midair, hoovering in the, in the, in the, in the air, you could not see it, but you could feel it with your hands because these speakers would pinpoint uh, vibrate on your hand. You would feel it actually. And in that sense, we created a, an out of body uh, sculpture of your emotional state, which was directly feedback. Uh, it was a direct feedback loop uh, because when I touched this body, it might change my emotional state. And in that sense, change the audio design, but also the sculpture. Uh, but if you think about it, uh, it's really awesome that the, the, the digital body is there in the computer, but is not there in reality until that, that I'm engaged with the act of sensing and observation, because then it sparks the thing in reality. So it's actually this quantum mechanic kind of thing that we built. Uh, coincidentally, uh, this is the outside of the pot and you see these white spaces and uh, when people get in, you see them flash off. So you also know what is kind of the basic orientation of the brain activity during the experience. This is another kind of setup we're preparing. Um, after synaptic theater, we stumbled upon this stuff. And this is like uh, a survey of uh, University of uh, Helsinki. 
which is awesome. Um, we mistook it for a heat map of the body uh, because it's a identification of where, if people are in a certain emotional state, where do they sense um, heat, uh, pain, uh, itches, all kind of bodily sensations. So they did a survey with, along, a, along a lot of people and these kind of maps came out. Uh, but as I told you, we first thought, well, fuck, uh, heat uh, map, awesome. Let's re rep reproduce that. So we did uh, create stories. And then with within the story space, we tried to kind of replicate these patterns with cold bags and hot, hot bag, bags. And uh, <clears throat> it was pretty interesting. Of course, people would not start crying after heating up in a certain pattern, but it really, really was very immersive. Uh, it opened up the body or closes the body if you do it right. And it was so strong that we decided to do a project about it. And that became like the foundation of uh, Cosmic Sleep, commissioned work we did for IFF in New York. And um, in uh, Cosmic Sleep, we created uh, our own technology to create heat animation on the body. So you would have a story, you would have a headphone, you would be a comet traveling our solar system. We would re recreate the smell of the comet and at the same time, you would have the heat animation on the body, feeling where's the sun, where's what's happening to me. And it's really strange because you never experienced that. You kind of, I know where the lamps are, so I know where to, to expect the heat. But if you can cool or heat up the body in pixel mode, it's really awesome. This is the torture machine uh, people have to lay down on. And this is the comet with the, a name I cannot speak. Um, but this, this was, um, one of the, the things that we took off was, well, okay, why not tell stories from a non-human perspective? Why should stories be about us? And it all was one of the key, uh, starting points for symbiosis project that's currently touring the world and, um, symbiosis, um, with that, with symbiosis, we try to kind of have a future speculation on, uh, what might happen if we look. Take, we kind of step away from a human-centric position that is governing the world now. Um, if you look at the environmental crisis, it's because we want all kind of stuff and think we can exploit the world, but it's obviously not uh, sustainable. So we need to kind of move away from that to another future. And in symbiosis, we want to kind of explore what happens uh, if we are, are willing to share power and resources with other living things. And that might include plants or animals, but also maybe future forms of life. Um, and we do that with uh, a multi-user <coughs> VR setup in which uh, people have also a wearable with soft robotics that change the body architecture. And that uh, is designed to kind of go and fit your virtual representation in the game people enter the world in different spots and end up in the center meeting each other in the sense um one of the key inspirations was this book from don airway in, in which he, he formulates an answer or a possible answer towards overpopulation and in the last book there's a, a amazing story camilla story in which she has this futuristic idea about uh, people um, trying to heal or save the planet by genetically merging or having offspring with um, endangered species. And I thought it was such an amazing idea to kind of incorporate that into a family tree to create new relationships with nature in this sense. And also uh, with that comes the care of the environment. Um, so that was like our backstory. And always want to show this because this, this is you, this is you with cell. It's this chemical robot that's doing all of these kind of things. But at the same time, the cell is uh, it, in a, in a sense, uh, any biology is, is symbiotic in a sense, sense, because it is, um, the melting of different, uh, proto cells into each other to become these more complex cell structures. So I always love that. And I think uh, if we talk technology, 
And that was like also one of the biases when we started the project of symbiosis that in the future, uh, I, I kind of suspect these worlds to merge into become one thing. This is uh, my favorite uh, image of a uh, uh, my zone uh, is dragged in your brain, in your nerve self. Uh, and in other, uh, next to it is uh, research on xenobots, which are robotic uh, systems created out of stem cells of frogs. And they can be programmed, created in a computer, selected and reproduce and create new stuff. And I guess the, the, the technology of the future is hybrid and biologic. So I'm going to show you a very short clip of symbiosis in VR. It was the first redesign of my body architecture. And at first I loved it. My new designed hypersensitive hybrid body could sense rails of smell never experienced before. The mist of my human imperfections dissolved, revealing completely new layers of reality, beauty, complexity, and meaning. I could experience the hidden corporal pleasures of becoming with my insect kin. And the smell language of the butterfly flock would scale up the reach of my hybrid body for miles and miles. So uh, this is how it looks like in reality. So we people wear these uh, leather suits. This is the Toad character. And it's full with all kind of um, soft robotics and basically inflatable systems. Uh, you can do it with liquids or with air. We use air. Uh, and each character has his own design, his own set of hack picks, uh, own set of smells, own set of food snacks, because it's fully multi-sensory. Uh, own storyline, uh, completely different uh, theme. And total, we have five stories like that, and they are parallel. So the interesting thing is also that it is this kind of social thing. Uh, you go in it, it's kind of a ritual, but if you step out of it, people immediately start, start sharing stories because they all experience something completely different. Um, so I really like that part of the project. This is a prothesis that moves to the neck when you're the multi-body. Uh, and this is a raw picture of the kind of inflatables that we created. And that was just like getting the 3D, 3D pre-printer at work, uh, making our own costs, and then just experiment a lot because 90% was rubbish. But the system is uh, controlled by these uh, cylinders, and each time one cylinder goes down, it pumps up air to the suit pocket and it inflates. So it has a, gives you a haptic, haptic stimulus of the body or a change of body architecture. And this is uh, from the side. And like I told you, we also give food snacks. And for that, we collaborated with a Michelin star restaurant in Holland. They created vegan food snacks to go. Uh, so each character has two snacks in the in the story. Um, and we use smells. So on the wearables, there are these canisters with liquids. And if you look at the white one, that contains a herb abstract that is uh, triggering oxytocin production in the human body. And an interesting thing about oxytocin is often called the love uh, chemical. It makes us uh, bond with each other. Uh, when pe people are pregnant, they produce it to create more relationship between the child and the father and the family, basically. But what's often mi is misunderstood is not only positive. If people are not part of your king group, it creates a distance and a more defensive uh, pose. But for us, of course, it would be, it's a very interesting ingredient to create more bondage with your virtual self and with each other during the experience. Uh, some of the artwork uh, that we created, this was a creature that could decouple itself and have different functions. One would be defense system, the other would be eating, <laughs> well, uh, food system. Uh, this would be one of the main characters. She would be. She was a human and interbreeded with, uh, or, or at, um, uh, enhanced with um, um, butterfly uh, smell um, antenna and other kind of uh, butterfly uh, traits. But she could not cope with the consequence and turned into this orchid flower. So that story was what about identity change, but mostly of like cross species kind of ident identity change. This is the multi like one creature living in the sea with multiple beings interconnected and also having one collective brain. And in on the floor, 
that would have three people physically interconnected to become one body. And we were talking about in the previous uh, uh, speech, uh, in this, we also, in the beginning, we experimented with one of the uh, players being the head, and the other would be the slave of the head, only see what the head is seeing, but able to control the head with his hands. Uh, but there was so much uh, motion sickness, we had to skip that. <laughs> uh, so now it's simpler. You can also be slime mold, which is an awesome character. I'm not going to get into it because of time, but it's awesome. And you can be an AI system. And they all tap into the real same real Unity environment, but they have a different perception of the same thing. Um, we're working on um, trying to fund an add-on to kind of increase put through because now we have a show with six people a run, but we want to take that to twelve people a run. Um, and for that, we want to create a shorter lichen a lichen uh, story where people can step in and step out of the VR in this kind of um, blob. And when you put your hand in, you will feel a soft robotics, but also able to kind of distribute smell with each other. This is, spec uh, yeah, the, the, the um, one of the, spin uh, this two, I want to show very fast two projects in production. Um, Future Botanic is kind of a spin-off of Symbiosis because in spin Symbiosis, of course, we are the artists. We create all these worlds and these speculations, but we want to give also the tool to the audience to create their own speculative nature and to tell stories with that. So for that, we want to do an AR, uh, augmented reality piece, in which um, users are co-creating with the AI to create speculative new um, nature and plant that into real nature environments to create new kind of ecologies. And with that, you can kind of do assimilations also because we often forget that if we want to do good, we sometimes don't, don't, don't do good because we don't overthink the consequence of the, the entanglement of all of these species with, with each other. Um, and to control that, we create this micro space uh, where there's world building is basically represented by uh, world admitters that cast um, traits into the world that you can collect to create your own um, new kinds of nature into prompt lines. So actually we're literally doing, um, using using like uh, prompt code um, as a DNA for new life forms. Then the final short, uh, project, uh, project I'm, I'm going to leave you with is um, something in development. Um, it's called Michael Brown um, Restaurant. Um, and uh, it is actually a three, a three stage uh, dinner experience. So you have like three courses, starter, main course and, and dessert. And actually each stage is a, is a installation. It is an XR installation in itself. Um, because if you think about the body, uh, almost um, 10 times uh, the body, the body mass, the, the human body has almost more 10 times more microbes living in and on the body than human cells. And they're completely entangled with your body. They take care of your health. They take care of your food uh, digestion. Without them, you would basically be hopeless. So we are in this really intimate relationship with these microbiome organisms. And this whole project is about that. Um, so the first starter we're developing is uh, uh, dinner for two, in which the audience is dining with himself or herself on this kind of dish, um, you have to lay down in it uh, with your body and then a robotics um, arm will take you to a certain spot on the body and that's equipped with cameras so you can see yourself laying on the desk. But after that, you can zoom in to the microbiome level. So then we turn into a full VR system where you can have a dinner for two so you can feed the micro microbiome on your body and at the same time you get a food treat in your mouth. Uh, so that's a dinner experience we're going to create. Uh, another project is some um, haute cuisine for the rectum. Um, since uh, a lot of uh, these microbiome, they enter the, the body uh, through the rectum. So it would be funny, we, it's, it's basically a performance, but you can also do it in a special program maybe. And basically, basically, we create this upside-down chairs for, di for a dining experience. 
you will have a story uh, going with that. And we actually serve actual snacks for your rectum um, during that uh, story that have uh, an impact on your emotional state. So you can have uh, a menu of four different choices, um, uh, manipulating your microbiome in your intestines to um, have a, 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 a a staying effect on your mental health later after you left the experience. Um, and we end up with another project. Uh, we, it's called Drinkable Memories, in which we create cocktails. Um, and it's actually a virtual body hovering ab around above this, uh, this, this installation. And uh, we've kind of found out this kind of new knowledge in the science that if you kind of all emotion each emotional state is basically handled with three hormones and the mixture of these hormones determines the whole spectrum of emotion response. So that's pretty awesome. So, and not only if you, so the, the audience will be able to store their lived experience into the installation. They will have a visualization on how that's stored in the brain, but also stored in your microbiome bec uh, because each time you have an emotional um, a, a episode, um, it, cre it, it creates a, a liquids, of course, and these liquids change the board, the liquid balance, the acid, set acidity, but also a lot, a lot of different things in the body. And in that sense, a memory is not only stored in your brain, but it's also stored in your microbiome and your full body. So often we think about the body if, as being this one thing with its one brain, but actually it is this whole integrated system where uh, all of these alien um, uh, hosts and, and uh, friends will help you um, in uh, your daily life, but also giving you emotional states. So uh, maybe a lot of stuff, but that's kind of it. Thank you for your attention.